Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the uh, March 6th meeting of the Board of Selectmen slash Sewer Commissioners. <coughs> we opened our regular session at 6 o'clock um, and had an executive meeting, and now we will be resuming. Mr. Cruz uh, went home ill. It wasn't the meeting that made him sick, but he went home ill, um, and so could I have a motion? For a clerk for the evening, please. I move that um, Sleper Winslow is clerk this evening. I'll second that out of necessity. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 300. Zero zero. Mrs. <laughs> Winslow, you are, you are the clerk. Um, I, I'll, I'll just do the announcements because I already have them. Um, and we have an open invitation to the citizens of Wareham to attend the dedication of the newly restored Wareham Veterans Wall in the Library of Memorial Town Hall next Tuesday, the 13th, from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. As you know, it, this has been an ongoing project over the past few years, and we are very proud to announce its completion. Handmade wood panels have been installed for each war of conflict, and brass nameplates affixed, inscribed with the names of those Wareham citizens who served. Uh, in addition uh, to the Board of Selectmen, the Town Administrator, and staff, the following individuals have confirmed their attendance. Senator Mark Pacheco, Representative Susan Gifford, uh, Veterans Agents Ed Merrigan and James Crockett, Commander Edward Coster of the Dudley Brown Post 2846, and Veterans Council Leader James Newman. So it'd be really nice to show some support uh, both for the presentation and for our veterans next Tuesday, March 13th at 5 p.m., 5 to 6.30 p.m. over in the uh, town hall. The, um, the Wayham Coffee Hour, a chance to have coffee and chat, interesting guest. Um, this next meeting, or coffee, the guest will be Mr. Bruce Savageau, who is a candidate for the three-year term as Wareham Selectman, and Mr. Peter Teitelbaum, who is a candidate for the two-year term as Selectman. Um, that's right here in this building, 9 a.m. on this Thursday in room 225. Uh, the Wareham Free Library on March 13th at 1.30 p.m. Uh, will continue their history and art discussions <coughs> series. And this uh, particular week, we're talking China. Blending communism and capitalism is the subject. That's Tuesday, March 13th at 1.30 p.m. at the library. And this will be presented by Jerry Chat. I always have trouble with that kind of name, Chikari uh, of Wayham. Is Jerry here? No. Ah, good. Maybe he's not watching either. Um, and while I'm on this page, tomorrow night, uh, you know, we uh, tend sometimes to forget some of these events. I try to broadcast them as often as I can. Uh, tomorrow night, the Wayham High School boys basketball team, who we all remember from two years ago, who won the... Uh, Division Three championship for the state of Massachusetts. They, are, they will be in the quarterfinals uh, facing a tough Cardinal Spellman team. Uh, we did beat them once this year. And tomorrow night's game is going to be at Taunton High School. That's right off of Route 140 in Taunton. Game time is 7 p.m. And for anybody who was there uh, Friday night, uh, that was just a smoker of a game. It went right down to the to the final seconds in Wareham won by uh, three points. So um, if you're around tomorrow night, 7 p.m., get there early because seats will be hard to, uh, to get and support our Wareham boys basketball team. On March the 8th, uh, the Wareham Village Association will be holding their monthly meeting at the Eastern Bank from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Also on March the 8th, from our Wareham Garden Club March meeting, uh, this should be interesting, it's on beekeeping and horticulture. 
And the regular meeting is at the Fellowship Hall, First Congregational Church on Gibbs Avenue, and that will be at 930. Uh, club, club members are encouraged to bring a non-perishable uh, food. Guests are welcome to attend the program at no charge. Wareham's uh, Relay for Life um, will be hosting a Mardi Gras party on Friday, March the 9th at the Eagles in Buzzards Bay. The event will last from 7 p.m. to midnight. Um, it will feature food, a DJ, and a cash bar. Tickets are $10 and will be available at the door. Again, that's for the uh, uh, Relay for Life Planning Committee. On March the 15th, there'll be a free presentation on bees and beetles. Uh, native pollinators, such as birds, bats, butterflies. Dr. Jolie Golanez, Dala, uh, pollinator habitat restoration specialist will be here and that will take place from 7 to 9 at the Old Methodist Meeting House on 495 Main Street. There will be light refreshments, um, so enjoy that presentation. On Friday, March the 30th, uh, Wareham will hold its third annual Work Summit program, a uh, Wareham Works program, uh, from 2.30 p.m. until 6.30 p.m. at the auditorium on, uh, over in Town Hall. Uh, admission is free. Congressman uh, Bill Keating will be the keynote speaker, and he'll be speaking right about 3 o'clock. Um, there'll be plenty of booths, refreshments, and it's a good, uh, it's a good opportunity for business people um, and others to come together um, and discuss business opportunities in Wareham. Um, there's a prom dress drive exchange, drop, or pick up prom dresses on Sunday, March the 11th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Old Country Store. Um, and what they're trying to do, obviously, is to uh, make these dresses available free uh, to high school girls who are in need of a dress. Adults can purchase some of these dresses, if you'd like, uh, for $20. In all proceeds, um, will benefit Woman Aid of Wareham. Um, a reminder that um, all petition articles uh, for town meeting must be submitted by this coming Friday, March the 9th at um, 4.30 p.m. Mrs. Winslow, do you have anything else? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mrs. Begley? Okay. No? Citizens' participation. Do we have anybody who'd like to speak, sir? Um, my name is Chet Heitzma from Parkwood. I noticed in the Wareham Week uh, last week that there's a headline, and it said the town looks to need to raise six million dollars as the deficit looms. I wonder if I could ask you to indulge me for just a moment because I feel the tax burden already falls unfairly on, on me. I have a uh, 4,000 square foot lot and I pay now almost $4,000. The house itself is less than 1,000 square feet of living area. It's assessed by the town at about a third of a billion dollars. If you go on Zillow.com or you do some comparables, you're going to find that that's actually at a quarter of a million dollars. That's a difference of $75,000. Now, I did put in a request for an abatement, and I'd like to beg your indulgence to come back when that comes through. But I think we pay these assessors to do an objective and a fair job, and I'd like to think they do that. But when they come up with an assessment for my property that's $75,000 more than what would be the reasonable price, I have to question that. So what I'm asking you now is, who is it that assesses the assessors? I'm sorry, the question is, who assesses the assessors? Correct. I well, mean, who, this past year, this past year, uh, the town of Wareham underwent a full 
revaluation. <coughs> we had uh, a company called uh, Vision come in, um, and they went through every property in the town, and they turned those figures into our assessor's office. Now, if you have an issue with that figure, uh, then you would go to uh, uh, to the assessor's office and file the paperwork if you have an issue with that figure. Okay. But, uh, so but there's no other firm that comes into the town and checks all that work, mm -hmm. as far as I know. Selectman Holmes, may I, may I reserve a moment or two on your calendar when that uh, abatement comes through so that I can... You I, can I, come I back any time you'd like, sir. Wonderful. You know that. I appreciate your help. Thanks very no much. Problem. You guys do a wonderful job. Just make job. sure you see, see Elsa and... and I have spoken with them there, and what they said was to me, and if I'm reporting it correctly, that the Board of Assessors meets, and I'm sure it's a public meeting, but what they don't allow is public participation. They're not going to allow me to ask them that question, and I, and I find that answer of yours very enlightening. Thank you very yeah. much, Mr. Holmes. I appreciate that. I know somebody who, who went through that process recently. That's how I know what the process is. But I think I see an assessor. I won't point him out. <laughs> <laughs> He's smiling right behind you, Chet. So you might want to turn around and grab David there. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Barrows? <laughs> He's going to come over and help you, Chet. My name is Gerald Barrows, and I came to you uh, last Tuesday, and I said that I was going to come here every Tuesday until something is done because I, I personally thought I was talking to deaf ears. But I want to congratulate you because last Monday or Tuesday, whatever it was, they had a crew out there from Wyham, those six guys. They jackhammered that whole place up. They fixed, they raised that basin because it was jewelry rigged from the state and now all it is is they, all they could do was put a coal patch on it. But I want to congratulate you, and I appreciate it. And uh, one that really appreciates it is my car. <laughs> because it cost me $89 because I had to have the front end realigned and re-inspected. I mean, that's the reason why I complain. It may, maybe it my, was my fault because I didn't see it, but. There was water in the hole, and I thought it was just water. And when I went and I hit it, and it's my own fault, but I just want to congratulate you that you did go in and you are listening. But the only thing I would like to ask, just a little more favor, if they could get some uh, a hot mix. I know they say it's the cold weather, but when you did the town over here, there was hot mix put on it. When they replace all that uh, uh, gas company main in Onset, I work for the gas company, they put all tar there. So I don't know why they can't get a little tar to put on that little square. But I, pre but I still appreciate what you did, and I thank you. Okay, and uh, Mr. Barros, if you would, just uh, as a follow-up to that, if you would contact Mark Gifford uh, from the maintenance department, and present that bill for eighty nine dollars. No, 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 no. You can have I a discussion with him about that, and I'm, they may be able to deal with that. No, no, I, uh, I'm not good trying to get no money okay. from you. Well, thank you that's very all, much for the right. kind words. I just want to let you know that my car appreciates. Okay. <laughs> uh, next, Mrs. Slavin. I'm coming right around the room this way. I see you over there. I see you, Ronnie. Thank you. Good evening, Sandy Slavin, Oak Street. Several things. I thought the OPL was also on the March 15th, and I was surprised you didn't include it in your announcements. And I have I'm sorry? I thought OPL, on the Protective League discussion yeah, with the candidates, right. is on the oh, 15th of March. I, 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 I wasn't aware. Okay. I, then that's probably why it was missed. <laughs> but uh, I'm not here to talk about uh, the removal of campaign signs from public property, public, private, sorry, right, private so property. So what was the date on that? So that OPL's the 15th. The OPL I believe candidate's is night is, is March 15th. 15th. At 7? 7 p.m. Okay. Correct. And I'm not here to talk about uh, campaign signs being removed from private property, but I would like to talk about the consent agenda 
for $6,800 worth of contract one invoices. The um, betterment fee for us in phase one was set in December 2010. Correct. Since then, we've had another $490,000 worth of invoices approved. And I'd like to know whether or not that 4900 plus the 6800 tonight were estimated and included in our betterment. <coughs> The answer, the answer as described uh, to us by Mr. Judici is that these bills, that we as the uh, Board of Selectmen, sewer, well, sewer commissioners, um, these bills are often several, several months behind. Mm -hmm. So these bills have already been dealt with on that side, and it takes several months to get them to us so okay because I noticed they would they would have been included in the in the betterment fee because they take the total dollars spent versus are projected and spent divide that by the number of, of pieces and you get the number I was just surprised that since the betterment I mean like these four right here mm -hmm. are all dated to late in 2011 or our betterment was sent in December 2010 so I'm just wondering how much yeah, of these I were say, really estimated. Yeah, I want to say that some of these things go back. Uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead, Mrs. Winslow. Um, Mrs. Slavin is addressing an issue that I intended to bring up ah. when we address these bills if she. I will wait. Thank you. Um, so, so my point is what I'm trying to get to is somewhere down the line, these were anticipated by um, CDM's comment at, at last week's meeting and therefore were estimated as included in that fee, why can't we get a betterment fee for phase two if we were, if we could do, if we could do it in phase one, a year before it was completed, why can't we get a, a betterment estimate uh, fee for phase two? And I believe uh, the answer from last week, if my memory serves me correct, is that we're looking at the end of March uh, from Mr. Campina with the total number of potential users. So we don't know how many stubs were That's put correct. in? That's correct. Well, I, I'm not going to debate whether I know how many stubs there are. Well, but the, the director of the sewer plant told us on last Tuesday that he wouldn't have that information to us for until probably two weeks. I, I don't have my notes with me, but it was towards the end of March he would have that to I'm us. I'm sure I'm like everybody else with phase two property trying to anticipate I understand. what I have to put out, what I have to estimate from. Um, I understand. As soon as we have that information from Mr. Campina, you know, we're, we're anxious to get that information out to the users as well. Okay, just let me check my notes one more time. I'm done, thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Robinson? No, I'm fine, I got the question. Oh, okay. I mean, that, I mean that's uh, to the other board members tonight, I mean, that's pretty accurate from what they said last week, right? Mm -hmm. I think you had pushed them, Mrs. Daglian. I'm still Whether pushing. it was March or whether it was the middle of April, and I think Mr. Campina came around and said it would be more towards the end of March. Mr. Chair, if I could clarify, the CDM can estimate their their future costs on a project a lot easier than uh, the contractor can. So in order to set the betterment, the contractor has to be finished in their bills into us or close enough to finish so we know what where they're going to be at. Um, and then divided by the total number of bettered properties, uh, and that would include properties that uh, may currently be vacant. So it, they actually have to physically walk the area to determine that number to ensure that we get an accurate count. Okay, anyone else? Uh, is citizens' participation, Mr. Slavin? No, you'll have to make a copy. I just got it late in the afternoon. Uh, the UMass of Dartmouth, the contract came through about a week and a half ago. Uh, Mr. Andrews signed it, so we're back in, in the swing as far as going forth for the coming year. The school year really is the fall semester and the following spring semester. We missed uh, basically the last uh, year because we, the contract was there, but we weren't going to any of their uh, what they call career days. Usually there's one in September 
and another one in April. Uh, this is where we line up the interns for the coming year and also the following year. Uh, the expense to the town is $75 to go. Uh, it wasn't authorized last year, so therefore we didn't go. And I just want to give you uh, an update that we're, we're ba basically the contract's back in again. And uh, if you look at the listing, it includes graduate school students this year. also includes the law school. So it gives us a much wider range of students to draw from. So the, the decision has to be made whether or not we want to participate in the April meeting or not. Thank you. Okay. We'll make sure we put that on the agenda for next week. Mr. Angels, could you get us any other additional information on this so we'll have mm -hmm. something to discuss? Do you, have you seen this? I didn't see that. Mark? No. You missed that one. Can the office scan that document yeah, to us? Yeah, I'll get copies please. to the rest of the board. And Thank we'll you. We'll get this on the 16th if we, if we need to respond by April 1. Oh, Sorry. yeah, by the April when? 11th, I guess. April 11th. All right, head out to the board. And, uh, okay. That's the second notice for the first notice was the big one. Sorry. Yes, copies. It's all good. Thank you. All right, any other uh, citizen participation? Westfield discussion? Did we get the, uh, I don't see Bill, did we get the, oh, Mr. Slavin, you got this? Yes, Sandy Slavin. I've been acting as the um, clerk for Westfield R um, RFP discussion group. Um, I have been looking for two sets of minutes with the Board of Selectmen since January, and I've tried several emails without a response. If you could please try to get me uh, the minutes of the Board of Selectmen in uh, Westfield meetings of six, of, sorry, 326 and 421 so I can complete my records of the history of the project. What meetings were these again? These were joint meetings with the BOS in Westfield. From 326 and 421. 12? 11. No, 11. Oh, 11. Because we just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's be honest, okay. I tell you, Sunday was a tough night, to didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and what was the second, what was the second date you had there? 421. I mean, I can send you the emails that I've been sending to the BOS office looking for this information. Uh, we'll check these. These okay. are for the, and you say these were joint, joint meetings? meetings? I remember one. I don't. I don't recall Did the other one. Did you get the we December minutes? The January? The January? Yeah, that's the one I think Mr. Heaney was questioned whether or not it was a, it was not a full meeting with the Westfield. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't have a, that. We didn't call a meeting. Okay. We didn't have a quorum. It okay. was just a discussion on our part, but we did get the minutes from the BOS, and he asked for an adjustment to it, okay. a correction to it. I do remember 421. Um, that was when you and Mr. Schneider had just come on the board. We had that meeting downstairs here. It was almost one of the last meetings. I but I don't recall 326. I'll have to look that one up. Okay. Okay. We'll get and, that. Uh, just to clarify, last Where are we at on the uh, letter? On the, on the we're changes? Wait, we're waiting for information. From? The Board of Selectmen. I believe there were at least two open items. One was the clarification of the sewer capacity and whether or not the pump stations were, um, could handle it. And I believe the second one was whether or not the Board of Selectmen can submit a CPA article. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to clarify that um, it was not just that the Board of Selectmen select, uh, submit the article, someone has to write the grant request. So who would be writing the grant request for the contractor? Did we get that back Mr. from? Uh, from Rich, the answer <coughs> on the, whether the Board of Selectmen could do that or not? Can you try to follow up on that tomorrow? Because yep. I mean, it seems we're at a dead end here. Well, again. I'm and sure we the Board of Selectmen can submit the article, but someone has to do the grant request. Well, I think Mark was checking to make sure that first we could do it from Rich Bowen. Yep. Yeah. Mrs. Begley. Thank you. I, did, I wasn't sure you could see me over here. Over here. <laughs> um, <laughs> who's liaison? CPC. CPC? Say it's, not me. it's me. So, um, 
Has this been, um, have we asked them for this to be on the agenda for, to see what CPC? This is not a CPC discussion. This is to say, this is for Westfield discussion. I who understand. submits the, yeah, who submits the uh, article? Okay. I'm just asking if there's, it's been on the agenda just to have the a conversation. It doesn't mean that there has to be a determination or a vote or a motion or anything. I'm just saying that a member of the Board of Selectmen, there's no reason why we can't, go, a member can't go and just have a conversation. With? With the CPC, right? Correct. If we were just waiting to get final, yep. Mark was going to check with Rich just to make sure that we were, well, how we should proceed but to make sure that we're doing the it The right. underlying thing is who writes the grant request to we'll CPC. We'll get to that. Yep. Yep. It we'll isn't just we'll submitting the article, we'll it's the grant request. We'll and yep. <coughs> I thought that, I thought, unless I read wrong, I thought that we were presented by Mr. Campina uh, with the capacities. Yes. Were we not? In a went to your, yes, we, went have, to we have a letter from Mr. Campita, but I was told he's not the determining factor. It has to come from the sewer commissioners. I thought we voted on that. Didn't we vote on that? Can we check on that? Mr. But Chair. Also a clarification of the pump station. Mr. Chair, I believe that we got an email in the middle of a meeting from Mr. Campina, but I don't believe we actually voted on it. So perhaps that should go on next agenda. Next agenda. All right. So one, one, we need to we need to furnish the c those capacity figures, right? And the pump station, and, and the, the status of that pump. And station. the third thing was whether or not what words you wanted. Furnish capacity. Me. Yeah. It's very distracting. What? Nothing. Conversation. No, no, no. No, Conversations. Alan was talking behind me. Please, uh, please refrain. The third thing was an open issue as to what to do with letter T, which was the definition of what the ball fields were to be, whether or not you wanted the detail in the RFP or you wanted the reference to the s data sources as to what softball fields and things like that, baseball fields, Babe Ruth would look like. I believe that was the third item we were waiting for. We already decided we, we did that. We yeah. decided we that. Voted on this stuff we voted on all when of it. Mr. Heaney was here that night. Okay, I just don't remember the vote. Yeah, it's in the minutes. Did we approve those minutes <coughs> yet, Mr. Holmes? Um, I don't, know. I don't believe be so. Packet, it might be in the packet tonight. No, there's no minutes in the packet no. tonight, Mr. Chair. All right. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. It just seems that we keep we on voted doing, on, we keep on all doing that. the same yeah. thing. Okay, and that was the ball field, right? Anyone else? Uh, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Back like to where we are. Okay. Mr. Uh, Chair. Consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, board. Anything else on Westfield before we move on? No. Mrs. Begley? Just if we can um, get get those, even if we gave them the draft minutes, that may yeah. be helpful. And if the, those minutes can come before the board I'll to ask, be approved. I'll ask to send those out in the morning. Um, and also the email that we received, um, I guess that definitely needs to be on the agenda for us to vote on from Mr. Campina for sewer capacity. Yeah, didn't Mr. Chair just say that he was yeah. going to? Right. Okay. Next week. He's writing notes. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah, I just have to make these notes so that we get it done right. 13th, Janet will send the stuff in the morning. We will track down these two. Consent agenda. Anything else on Westfield, Mrs. Begley, Elsa? Yep. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, before I make any motions uh, concerning the CDM bills, I just want to bring to the board's attention a couple of things. Uh, we do not have a letter from CDM, which typically uh, explains what the bills are that we're looking at. Um, Mrs. Slavin brought up a point that also concerned me, and that is, it, was this is this money part of the estimate that they gave us? These bills have not been approved by Mr. Gifford, who typically approves these bills prior to us seeing them. And one of these invoices is dated October 1st. So if it would pleasure the board, I would prefer to get some answers from CDM as to why we're getting invoices a full five months after they're invoiced, whether or not these invoices were inclusive in their estimate, and three, has Mr. Gifford looked at and approved these invoices because I believe that as the Director of Municipal Maintenance, he's also um, overseeing this project, and he's the only eyes and ears we have out there to assure us that these bills in fact should be approved for payment. 
So the motion that I'm going to make is to put these invoices on hold pending answers to those questions. And an answer as to whether or not this was part of their estimate. The, these are contract one bills a full year after the betterment was set. And these are all, all four of these, correct? That's correct. We have a motion on the floor to, <coughs> to put a hold on these four until further explanation from Mr. Giffen and Mr. Judici in a letter form. Do I have a second? I will second for discussion. Second for discussion, Mrs. Begley. Mrs. Begley. <laughs> um, I, I agree that we need some <coughs> sort of explanation, but when I look at these, these are from October, November, and December. Um, I don't think it's unusual that um, we see invoices um, from just a couple of months ago. And I also noticed that with the invoices, there's one that's 96.74% complete. So they show us where it fits in on the overall budget. There is um, one's 97.49% complete, one's 98.29% complete. So although we do, generally these are accompanied by letters from um, Mr. Gifford um, and or CDM explaining where they fit in the, in the budget, I don't see that any of these are um, extra cost. And just, and just for um, clarification on a couple of these, <coughs> in our packets, In our packets, these are not signed by no, Mr. Gifford. No, they're not. But in the, um, the packet from the office, they, they are, are signed by Mr. Gifford. So they didn't copy those. those. They didn't copy these after the city were signed by Mr. Gifford. So and the issue we might have is to make sure that what goes in the packets is the latest version, for one, if you're listening in the office tomorrow. <coughs> Mr. Chair, the first invoice actually goes back to August and we did have a conversation with CDM about these invoices that go so far back and they had agreed um, to try and do a little bit better. There is a delay obviously because people have to approve their, you know, people have to submit their hours and, and stuff like that. I still want to make sure that these dollars were part of that estimate that they gave us when we set the betterment. It doesn't matter whether they were or not, but I still want to know for myself whether this was part of the estimate. I mean, I think we should know that. All right, so we've got a, we got a motion to hold. Mr. Burks, pleasure, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Chair, next we have a bill from Blattman, Brabowski, and Mead, LLC. Um, I move to approve payment on invoice number 7383 dated February 21st in the amount of $15,000. Mr. Chair, next we have a license, an application from Eaton Trading Company Incorporated doing business as Rice Bowl 3103 Cranberry Highway East Wareham for a common VIC license under the provisions of Chapter 140 of the Massachusetts General Laws. Can we have a 
have me. representatives here from the rice bowl. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, his name is Larry. Is the owner of the rice. His name is Larry <coughs> and is the owner of Rice Bowl, and I'm um, his cousin trying to interpret it for him because mm -hmm. uh, our English is not very well. <laughs> and we're trying to uh, renew the, <coughs> is it the common visualized license? Mm -hmm. Is, is there a reason why this renewal is so late? Because uh, his grandma is in California, and he, uh, I mean, she was, ha she had the surgery in there, so that's why he stayed there for a couple months with her, and he forgot that. I make a motion to approve the application of Eaton Trading Company, Inc., doing business as Rice Bowl 3103 Cranberry Highway, East Wareham, for a common VIC license under the provisions of Chapter 140 of the Massachusetts General Laws. Second. Motion made by Mr. Winslow, second by Mr. Begley. Is there anything else from the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Thank you very much. All set. Thank I'll, you. I'll grab my better. Yeah, me too. So, so they have to go into the office? To pick up the yes. Yep. Okay. So you, do you know where to go in the office at town hall? Okay. Tomorrow to p to to pick up your pick current up. license. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, so what floor? Third floor. Third floor. So, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Thank Chair. Thank you very much. Please let's not You're welcome. The well, I'm supposed to have the yellow folder. Yeah, I know, Mr. Chen. Next, we have a request for the use of town roads by Wareham Little League, Inc., care of Stephanie Thornell, for their annual parade. The parade starts at Elm Street to Route 28 to the Little League Field on Charge Pond Road on April 15, 2012, at 12 p.m. Is there anybody here from Little League? I know they had a meeting tonight, so they may still be uh, meeting. Uh, Mr. Chair, this is an annual event. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the application for the request of town roads by Wareham Little League, Inc., care of Stephanie Thornell for their annual parade. The parade starts at Elm Street to Route 28 to the Little League Field on Charge Pond Road on April 15th, 2012 at 12 p.m. I have a motion seconded by Mrs. Begley. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Three, zero, zero. Mr. Chair, next we have a request for use of town roads by Church of the Good Shepherd, Project Bread, care of Reverend Dave Bernier for their annual Wareham Walk for Hunger. And we have a representative here. Reverend Dan Bernier for Church of the Good Shepherd. Good evening, Reverend. How are you? Very good, thank you. If you want to take just a couple of minutes and explain your event, you're on. It's your, sure. it's your commercial. Sure. On uh, Sunday... Uh, May 6th, we have our third annual Walk for Hunger, and it, uh, all the benefits, the proceeds go to Project Bread, which has grants to many different organizations that work with the hunger, to help feed the hunger, including many here in, in Wareham. And so we, um, we have opportunities for anyone in the community who would like to come um, at 1 o'clock uh, to come and walk in that Walk for Hunger, and also to, uh, to raise money for that walk as well. So Thank you very much. Can I ask a question? Mrs. You make Begley? A Hi, Reverend. How are you? Hi. Good. Um, so tell me, explain this to me. Do people come and they just participate in the walk and donate, or do they get sponsors? They get sponsors. So they can check with uh, Church of the Good Shepherd, and we can, we can give them the paperwork to, to get sponsors for the, for the walk. Wonderful. Yes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you for that clarification. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the request for use of town roads by Church of the Good Shepherd, Project Bread, care of Reverend Dan Bernier for their annual Wareham Walk for Hunger. The parade starts at the chir Church of the Good Shepherd down Sandwich Road to the Church of the Nazarene along Route 28 before turning onto Depot Street, then to Minot Ave to Main Street, then back to the Church of Good Shepherd on May 6, 2012 from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. Motion made by Mrs. Beck, by Mrs. Winslow. 
Seconded by Mrs. Begley. Anything else on the discussion? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Three zero zero. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You, you have a you. wonderful evening. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Chair. Might I ask for the board's indulgence? We do have two committees here that we've asked to come and meet with. Is it possible for us to meet with them before we proceed with the town administrator's report? It's <coughs> fine with me. Under oh. what? Who's next? Uh, under town business item B, meeting with the Community Preservation Committee. Is there anybody here? Oh, here comes Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming your oh, meeting. No, <laughs> the Community Preservation Committee requests a, a postponement in this uh, meeting with the BOS until we can have right. a meeting with our um, committee to discuss the future plans that has been requested um, in our invitation. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank uh, you. I did, uh, I did last week when I was in the office. Uh, uh, what's happening is these invitations are going out, right? As we pick the committees, they're going out so fast. The committees don't even have a they chance don't have time to, to prepare. prepare. It needs to be report. at least, I would say, four to six weeks in advance right. so that it can be placed on an agenda and there can be so we got a meaningful that. discussion. I agree. Right. Thank so you. That's I agree. That's fine. Because I did see the open space received a, a request to be here, and I asked for a postponement with that one, too. Yeah, yeah. so that way we've got to we talk as a committee. Be, uh, these are meant to be informative sessions, a little back and forth about what's going on, what's happening, what's the latest news, do you have any openings, are we looking for volunteers? You got it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and without the committees having a chance to put their reports together, um, it's really. And some committees only meet help. once a month, right. so they may have just met and okay. then received the invitation. So, so sorry for forcing you here, but it looks like you were here anyway, well, so uh, okay. you'll be okay. Women, I'm going to go up, turn around, and come back. Mine at Forest. Mine, Mine at, at Forest. forest. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we, they'd met wow. last night. But yeah. you're going to save me some because Peter didn't send me an email. Oh. The Mine at Forest had a meeting last night to discuss the um, proposed contract for clearing the dead pine, red pines. We do have a, a letter from a um, forester who said that they are of no value. So we were discussing the contract. We had comments on it, and um, we're not ready to bring it before the Board of Selectmen yet. We have some questions that we're still dealing with. I believe that covers it. I, I think so. I was there as well, um, Mr. Holmes. And they were, they were just clarifying the con contractual language. and. Um, the had hope had been that the wheels would turn much more quickly and that the machines would be in the mine at forest on frozen ground. Yes. Although we've had a fairly mild winter. We haven't so had frozen ground. We really haven't had yeah. frozen ground. Now the concern is because, um, and it, it's kind of the way it is, hopefully there won't be too much, but now it's, they're worried about nesting. Yeah, it's spring, it's, it's baby time and stuff right. like that. But one of the things we're working on as part of the contract is Appendix A, which asks what equipment do we want in the contract. So we've put out feelers to our forest agent, Forrester, who had done the study, what type of equipment is best to serve that site, and we need that to attach to the contract. We're not ready for that yet. Right, so they just, they just went over the contract with a fine-tooth comb, and they're working on the language. Is there a time frame? Well, we had hoped to have it for frozen ground, but it's one of those things that we, whatever the time frame is, it's best for the land and, and the animals that live on that land. And fire. fire and yeah, we are concerned about the trees coming down with a big storm or right. fire or something like that. The quicker, the better. Will, will you be delivering that message back to the board, or, or will we reschedule? Uh, will um, we have mine at Forest Inn once all that's been decided? Certainly, whatever the board wishes. I mean, if you'd like to have, I'm sure that, that they wouldn't hesitate to come in and, okay. and speak to these issues. Because we had a and crew I've in, been, right? Right. And um, they've been awesome with keeping me abreast of the events with um, <laughs> emails, et cetera. Okay. Mrs. Winslow, do you have anything? Uh, no, not for the Mine and Forest Committee. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Sandy. Am I done? Yeah, you're done, you're I done. think. <laughs> Unless you have anything on the on I didn't think Unless I'm you have any anything under any other town <laughs> business or liaison <laughs> reports, I mean I think you're fine. Thank okay. you. Good thank evening. You. Good evening. Mr. Chair, moving back up, and thank you, Mr. Andrews, for your indulgence to the town administrator's report, which is item number eight on the agenda.
It's on. The light's on. I don't think his mic's working. Mr. Chairman. There you go. It's on. Uh, Thanks, through you Mr. To drink water. <laughs> Thanks, Derek. Through you to the board and to the listening audience and the audience here tonight. Uh, Harbor Master Buckminster could not be here tonight. He was called away, so we'll put him on for a future meeting coming up, if that's okay with the board. Mm -hmm. um, on February 15th, I'm proud to say we met with the Massachusetts Emergency Management uh, Agency um, on the reimbursement policy for uh, the town's cost. We had expended over $300,000 uh, regard with regards to the uh, hurricane or st tropical storm Irene. And I joined with Chief Stanley, uh, Lieutenant John Walsek, Lieutenant, Lieutenant Kevin Walsh, and Bill Philman, uh, with Douglas, Douglas Forbes, who was a representative of MEMA. Uh, the current status is that we are waiting for our reimbursement, which will come back to uh, the town hopefully very shortly. Uh, Mr. Forbes was extremely helpful as he outlined the procedures and policies for the key components of this emergency planning and reimbursement program. Uh, I might also say that we were one of the first communities in Plymouth County to put forward its application for reimbursement uh, so that the public understands. Uh, we are hopeful to receive up to 75 percent return back uh, from the federal government, state government with regards to our expenses. Uh, the lion's share of these expenses lie in the municipal maintenance department as well as the uh, police department. And if we all recall, we got through that, that one pretty uh, in pretty uh, smooth fashion. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, on February 22nd, I invited our insurance company in to talk with our department uh, 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 leaders, our uh, leadership team. We met with uh, Mr. B William uh, McKinnon, uh, Adrian Magnola, Michael Eaton, and Laura Packman from Meyer uh, with our leadership team. And in your packet, you will find the Meyer Re Rewards Program, of which we have participated uh, in for quite some time, uh, the Meyer Rewards Program provides the town with credit and return of uh, dollars that we would otherwise spend on insurance uh, to the town with regards to credits for taking and being proactive on things with regards to risk management, uh, personnel management, and uh, documentation uh, of attendance at seminars and other types of tracking credit credits in the uh, packet uh, is copied in, in your uh, binder uh, for this evening's discussion. Uh, item number D, Mr. Chairman, we've been working on this for quite some time. I have sent letters to U.S. Uh, Senators John Kerry, Scott Brown, Congressman Bonnie Frank, Congressman William Keating, with regards to the uh, potential closing of the Wayham Postal Processing, Processing Center. Um, I did receive a letter. Actually, let me, let me go back a step. Uh, back on uh, January 3rd, I testified on behalf of the town with regards to the Wareham Processing Center uh, here in Wareham. And as you know, the U.S. P Postal Service has been working for quite some time to try to come up with a modified business plan where they could either break even or perhaps even make a few bucks. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Um, they have over 800 centers across the country. Their model that they proposed back in January was to reduce that down to 250. Um, and uh, we, we are in that plan. Uh, I did provide... Uh, along with uh, Congressman William Keating, uh, testimony at that uh, session that was held for to collect data uh, in the uh, cafeteria of Town Hall. I did then received a, a letter from Joanne Kalaki Hogan of the Greater Boston District uh, that outlines uh, the uh, closing procedures uh, for the center. I just want to make it very clear to the listening audience. We had hoped through that uh, meeting, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, to receive some feedback on our growth. The town has grown by 7.3% in the last federal census. We're attracting business and industry with the new uh, business park at Rosebrook. We have other developments, uh, 815 Main Street, uh, other uh, housing developments in town. And, and you would think that that would convey a, some nuance as to um, what would be included in a closure plan or potential closure, closure plan. Uh, I've asked for uh, the the actual feedback from that meeting to be sent not only to the town administrator but to the Board of Selectmen. I will keep you posted on this matter. Um, I want to also mention to the Board that we have processed uh, under, under the Massachusetts School Build, Building Authority um, schedule um, a plan 
to put together a, uh, a team of uh, uh, municipal leaders with regards to the Minot Forest School renovation. Uh, I was informed by the superintendent that this plan is going to cost approximately $575,000 to get the study done to get us into the process for that rehabilitation uh, of uh, the Minot Forest School. Uh, the, the information will be, will be forthcoming and uh, the school committee has established a school building committee uh, and if approved uh, by the state, uh, we should hear back from the MSBA by April 9th, 2012 deadline um, as reported uh, in, in that document. Um, I also just want to underscore, Mr. Chairman, that next Tuesday, uh, the veterans dedication uh, I have invited uh, the citizens of the town to participate and come to town hall. Uh, it's the People's Hall. Uh, we have uh, a, a ceremony and light refreshments. Uh, I want to also mention that we've invited uh, families of certain municipal maintenance workers uh, to participate in that, that event. And uh, once again, the public is welcome to attend uh, at 5 p.m. on March 13th uh, next Tuesday. A status of report of ongoing issues. Uh, we are continuing working with our legislative delegation on the uh, Board of Sewer Commissioners uh, language and, uh, and their legal counsel at the State House. Uh, cooperation and update with the school committee. Where are we at on this? Where does it stand specifically? We have, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, we have supplied language through town council, which has given them language that uh, would give us uh, the ability to move forward, notwithstanding any other special act to the contrary. And that language is, I believe, the linchpin to move us forward. We got that last week. That, so that's still pending. To us. Yeah, so we're waiting on that. Yes, for, for, for a Senate Council and House Council's approval of that proposal. Does that go to town meeting? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, if, if Mrs. Bagley may have the same question I have. Didn't that language, and I didn't bring it with me tonight, um, I'd hoped it would be on the agenda. Didn't that language contain um, what would happen during the transition from this Board of Sewer Commissioners to the elected Board of Sewer Commissioners? It, it did, for you, Mr. Chairman, it, it did specify certain uh, criteria by which the town could move forward, and it would be required to go back on a ballot uh, at the next possible time. So it has to go back to town meeting? It has to go back to the process. You are correct. Mm -hmm. So it's going to go back to town meeting? Mm -hmm. no. Okay. On this warrant? We, we'll hope we're going to get it on this warrant mm -hmm. so we can bring it forward. Well, Friday closes. That's mm -hmm. correct. Is it going to be ready right. by Friday? Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, we can put a. Oh, yes, I believe so. It's not a yes. Well, is it the, the link. <laughs> <laughs> the, we, we'd I like mean, we would like to get some feedback from the legislative council to tell us that we have the right lang language in to go to town meeting because he, uh, if you can harken back to the original language, cause this issue with respect yeah. to how the transition would happen because I'm just going from my memory here now, but I believe this to be uh, the case, that we had at one time a board of sewer commissioners and then we created uh, back in the early 19-teens and we created a board of selectmen that then took on the responsibilities of the board of sewer commissioners. So we have to untie that language going back in time, Mr. Chairman. That's All the right. issue at hand. Mrs. Begley, anything else? Um, on the w so we're, what? what we're saying, what this all boils down to, is that we're hopeful that we will have the language back from the state in order to go forward with the Springtown meeting. That's correct. Okay. Who's carrying the water on that today to get that back in our office by Friday at 4.30? When you say carrying w who's the water, who's we're working with is both. Is it Rich? Is it somebody at the state office? Senator right? Pacheco's office, Mayor Weiselak, and, and Senator Pacheco's office. So do you remain doubtful, hopeful, what? I'm always hopeful, Mr. Chairman. Well, I understand that, but reality is, is it going to get back to us by Friday? I believe, I believe we have the language. It would be nice to have the Senate and House sign off, and if we don't have it, I think we do oh. just go so straight ahead. So they have to sign off on this language before it goes as a warrant article to town meeting. Is, is that correct? That's the preferable route to go, because, okay. then, because then you know, through you, Mr. Chairman, just like when Begley, then you know that they have have provided some form of legal review before I you understand. get to the process. I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Continue, please. Mr. Mr. Chairman, on number two, um, as you know, we will be 
uh, we, the board, chairman of the board, uh, Chairman Cruz, has called a meeting with uh, respect to uh, the uh, town's fiscal 2013 budget to be held at 8 p.m. on Thursday uh, to work with the uh, school committee and finance committee uh, to just really get down to some of the specific details that we need to with respect to uh, the budget article going forward at the town meeting uh, in April. In term, uh, the next item, Mr. Chairman, town hall virtualization. I believe all the equipment is, is in. I didn't get a chance to debrief totally with Mr. Underhill uh, this afternoon, uh, but I will get uh, a written update for the board uh, for our next meeting. Yeah, I was going to ask on this. Um, it seems to me last March, I recall, this was going to be implemented right away. Can you, can you get uh, Matt, Mr. Underhill, to come in at your next, uh, you know, one of your department head? You know, you have a couple in the week. Can he come in and kind of sure. give us some detail on this, where we're at, Mark? Sure thing. I think it would be helpful to, to, to the people to know. And we can move him up whatever list you got. Sure. That'd be nice. Yep. Mr. Swinburne? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Can we also get an idea of where we're at cost-wise on this project? Mr. Chairman, I'm, I'm happy to do that uh, because um, this is a warrant article, and it had four, it has four hundred thousand dollars in it, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the amount that we're going to spend. Just so that we're clear for the record, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Begley, anything on this on one? On this one, yeah. Um, would it be helpful? I mean, is it possible? Do we have? Um, all right. Let me collect my thoughts here. This this town hall virtualization vendor um, was was uh, part of the contract was ten hours per month. Is that correct? For support, I believe or it was around ten to fifteen hours. I can't hours. remember. Yeah, but there was language in there that they would give us some hours. Yes. Is can can would it be appropriate to have a representative accompany Mr. Underhill? Sure. Great. Oh, Thank that's you. a good idea. Yeah. Mrs. Winslow, is that it? Mrs. Mm. Mrs. Winslow, you had more. Or you're all set. No, I just I'm just thinking that it'd be a good idea for us to see. How deep into that four hundred thousand we are, and what work is remaining? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Mr. Andrews, continue. Yes, please. Um, you, w you will be receiving um, Mr. Cole and I updating the financial management action plan, uh, which you have uh, received, and we'll be getting that update to you uh, over the next uh, couple of days, certainly before the next meeting, Mr. Chairman. A questions for Mr. Andrews, Mr. Begley. Can I just like to go back to item E, Mr. Andrews? Oh, you can't go back. Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> I just want to know if this is $575,000 and this is to rehab, this is a study to rehab mine it or a new elementary school. So that's just a huge amount of money to me. This, Mr. Chairman, th this is the estimate that we've, the school district has received with respect to the study for what needs to be done to upgrade the Minot Forest School um, and to uh, complete uh, a um, state-sponsored uh, rehab of, of the school. And so you need to study before you can get to a set of certified architecturals and engineering design, which is another process, a whole separate process. Now, um, you mentioned a committee. Yes. And do you, know, do you happen to know off the top of your head who the players on the committee? Who, 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 how, how is the committee um, comprised? I believe the committee co uh, composition, and I'll double check this, is specified by state uh, regulation or law. Mm -hmm. uh, and it includes things like, I'll use myself as an example. As town administrator, I would have a seat. As the chief procurement officer, I would have a seat. And I'm also a state certified inspector general's contract manager's uh, seat. So I have, they tell me I have three seats and one vote. So you go <laughs> figure that one out. That's how, I guess how, that's how it works. But by virtue of, I believe, uh, I'll, I'll get the listing for you okay. so I won't speculate. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. Mr. Chair? Mrs. Winslow? Through you to Mr. Andrews. This is a very um, complex process with the Massachusetts School Building Authority. And is it possible uh, for Mr. Andrews to invite a representative from the schools to walk through the process? It might be nice for the public to understand it also. This the way that this process works is that 
a good deal of our costs associated with the construction are then reimbursed from the state. However, we have to meet certain goals within <coughs> certain time frames. I, I don't think we have to have more than like the 15 minute, you know, Reader's Digest version, but just so that the sure. board understands. Hap Mr. Chairman, I'm happy to do, do that. It's a valuable suggestion. Just so the board also knows, once you do put your oar in the water, there's a clock that starts to tick that specifies 270 days of activity by which you can you need to complete certain milestones. I'll yes. get your copies of, of that, mm -hmm. and it might make sense to in, in invite uh, a, 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 a staff person from the Massachusetts School Building Assistance Authority to come and talk with us, to give us some you know further ideas, you know either before mm -hmm. or after, or maybe even together with the school official. Well, I just think I mean years ago. I worked in a procurement office for a town and we did a, a project under this. It's just a very complicated uh, process and I think it would benefit the public as well as the board members to have a good understanding of how the process works, why we need to take the steps we need to take, why we have to expend money, how much of the money we're going to see through the process come back to the community, and what the total cost will end up being to the taxpayer. It's a very valuable suggestion, Mr. Chairman, for you. Yeah, and I believe that, you know, that this process actually started um, just over a year ago when we had our combined meeting on the schools and the budget. This is that process, and the Board of Selectmen had to vote <coughs> so that the school committee could even put the name of the school into that process, if you remember. And then, uh, so now this is coming up on step two, but I, I believe most of that money comes back, doesn't it? This five and change? You look when we're selected, is that how it works, or is it before? Mr. Chairman, they, they will tell us, uh, given the work that the study will project to be done, what type of reimbursement we will get back. You're okay. absolutely correct. Our tax dollars are held in Boston, whether it comes from the personal income tax or, sa or the sales tax or other types of taxes, uh, and re is returned through the State Treasurer's Department uh, under the MSBA. Right well put, though. That was a very good point. Anything else, Mrs. Bagley? Uh, I, I have one question. Um, a few weeks ago, the board met um, emergency um, session um, to get the uh, Mr. Schneider's seat on the ballot, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And you went up the next day, I saw something, mm -hmm. hand-delivered this thing to the governor, and Mrs. Uh, the Madam Clerk uh, allowed papers, and people have returned those papers, the whole election process is going on. Um, and she already has the ballots done, apparently for the April 2nd, 3rd election, whatever day it is. What is the status of that document? Because I saw a comment by Senator Pacheco, and it's still in his office. He hadn't brought it to the floor. He hadn't done anything with it. And we only have, what, three weeks to go, four Mr. weeks to go? Mr. Chairman, it's a good question, but, but let me make the distinction between a home rule petition, which is – uh, the town's asking for some form of relief from the state legislature. Um, in this particular case, we went, if you recall from the documents that we provided through town council, uh, a governance bill, which is the governor's legal counsel files it on behalf of the governor. So it's virtually guaranteed that you're going to get a signature after it goes through that process. I talked with uh, Mary Weisliak once again late in the afternoon today. Uh, the governor has it. Uh, their council has reviewed it. They're set to file it and move it through the legislature. Um, and Santa Pacheco and Representative Gifford have all been um, provided copies of that legislation. So once it, it is filed, you know that it once it passes the House and the Senate, goes to the governor for uh, his uh, review and signature. That that virtually once again, it's a, a legal preview. That process has been completed, and there won't be any ifs, ands, or buts with it. And my follow-up question is pretty much the same one that I had about the other piece is, you know, who, you know, we're sitting here less than 30 days away and we need all this state government action to happen. Yeah. What happens if that doesn't happen by April 3rd? Oh, what's the date of the election? April 3rd. April 3rd. What happens if that doesn't happen? And you've had an election, you've had people uh, take out papers, and you've had a ballot, and you've had an election, and that's still not signed. Uh, I believe the language, Mr. Chairman, uh, provides the town with the utmost flexibility with regards to the election. That's why we chose this language, and that's why we work to have it formed as a governor's bill. Um, I've seen legislation go through the House. You probably know I spent 13 years on Beacon Hill. That could go through in two to three days. So let, let's see how uh, the process is. 
the, the uh, plays out. Uh, the, the bill should be filed this week. Uh, I'd say probably mid next week we'll know uh, as the House and Senate usually meet Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday and are in an informal session on Thursday and Friday okay. most of the time. Maybe you could just pop that on here for the next couple of weeks. Just sure thing. Maybe Happy if you wouldn't mind. All right. Ready? Mrs. Winslow. Uh, Mr. Chair, next up on the agenda is the appointment of the CETA director, but I don't have anything in the packet. Is there something in the um, clerk's I, yellow folder that I, you still maybe have? It's just, maybe it's just an update. I, I, I don't know that we can actually announce a CETA director until he's accepted. I was wondering that myself. Uh, we, uh, just an update as to where we're at in the process. Um, we have prepared, and we will have prepared by the end of this week an offer letter um, to the successful candidate, and hopefully within uh, you know, the next couple of weeks, we'll have an acceptance. Um, and our goal is to have someone um, in the position probably the first two weeks of April. Mm -hmm. Is that fair mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. uh, for a general statement for now? Yep. And we'll have much more on that next week. Okay. Um, moving right along, we've already met with the Community Preservation Committee and the Mine and Forest Committee, so we have the seasonal renewal certification for 2012. Now, last week we voted on the population figures, so Mr. Andrews, I'm not quite sure why this is on the agenda. We do? Well, no, those are two failed to renew. We had a renewal from, yeah, why isn't that on this list? Oh, yeah, they do. No, it's on the list. It's, it's, on the, uh, it's a blank page with two licenses on it for renewal. No, those are licenses who failed to renew for oh, 2012. Sorry, I'm misreading that. You're absolutely correct. My apologies. So does notice need to go out to these two establishments? Is well, my question. One of the establishments transferred to the year round under the jobs bill right. that, that was created. So they wouldn't be ne in need of a seasonal light. They wouldn't be eligible for a seasonable li seasonal license. Uh, and the other one. I it's see. It's con one's converted to a year round. Right. Yeah. And, and one is transferred. Is going to be transferred to the new, yeah to the new owner, but we don't have that paperwork yet. So, what action are we supposed to take on this agenda item? I have no idea. We don't have anything in our packet. No, nope. hearing nothing, we'll move right along to. Yeah. I have one item under two items under any other town business, but I'll let you decide, Mr. Chair, which direction around the table you're going to go. Just proceed. Mrs. Thank you. Well, you know me, I like to talk. Um, we had a letter uh, in our packets tonight from the, uh, the Wareham Land Trust discussing the um, town-owned Faring Hill Conservation Area in the 2011 Annual Monitoring Report. And in this letter, it suggests that we um, do not have a comprehensive town hunting policy and urges us to investigate this issue. And I'm hoping, I realize next week's agenda is full, but if we could perhaps get this item on the agenda for discussion the following week, which would be March 20th, uh, because it does appear from uh, what they found on their walkthrough uh, that there were, they found two deer stands. One was uh, destroyed, the other, is an active deer stand and is in close proximity to a walking trail. So I would say this matter would require our attention as quickly as possible. Okay. We'll take care of that. So March 20th. And maybe we could even have somebody from the land trust come in to discuss it with us and maybe they have a draft of a policy that they would suggest we utilize for this area. This is, this is also town-owned land, so there should not be any private structures on that land. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my second item is we do need to appoint town council before the end of March. We're going to need to get that on an agenda ASAP. 
Yes. To discuss how we're going to proceed forward with that. That would conclude. That'll be on next week. Next week. Great. Thank you. For um, town business? Yes. Um, no. Um, nothing comes to mind since we're going to put um, town council on the next agenda. I'll, I'll hold my comments till then. Okay. Uh, yeah. One thing I had uh, under town business, uh, I had spoke to, uh, and really it has, it, came up after the agenda was put out, so it's reasonable that it wasn't going to happen. And we can do it next week, I think. Um, I spoke to Rick Stanley, uh, Chief Stanley, about this new committee that they're formed in the town. Um, the emergency response? Yes, and I, I don't have the f official name, but next week I will be making a motion to the Board of Selectmen to... Uh, to uh, in other words, uh, ratify this commission or committee uh, because you can't have committees with all these different people from t different parts of town without a sa sanction is the word mm -hmm. I want to use. So I will speak with Rick again this week and have it on the agenda for next week. And basically all we're doing is just a sanctioning the fact that we formed the community in town. You know, the chief is the chairman. And I did mention to him whether or not he was going to have public uh, appointees. I was, I mean, at that time, he wasn't sure. So we'll make sure that's on next week, just to make you all aware that that process mm -hmm. is going through. OK. OK. Uh, sore business, the only thing under sore business we have is any sore business. I don't have any sore business, but Mrs. Begley's hand is up. I do. Mrs. Begley. Um, well, I, I just. In the strongest language possible, I think that we need to um, push uh, CDM and push Mr. Campina to get the information that the people deserve from contract one and two. And the other um, question that I have is, whatever happened about the, um, the bills that we received for the water main that was changed for Wayham Water District for contract one? because it's a significant amount of money, which probably came out of the, um, I assume, the Sewer Enterprise Fund. So that's $185,000. It did not, I repeat, did not go on anyone's betterment from contract one. I checked into that. Mr. Chair. <laughs> the way that it was explained to us when they made the request for that change order was that we, the town actually pays the bill and then invoices the water department so we would have to check to see if that process actually occurred and if that bill was paid. Here's the problem with that, Mr. Chair. May I respond? We got a series of emails and they didn't have a mechanism through the water district because um, they didn't have, I don't know if it went out to bid, they didn't have a contract. Um, right now that seems to be up in the air, so there isn't a mechanism for the water district to reimburse the town, so I would like to, to ha um, ask Mr. Andrews to pursue this and see where it stands? Well, I would, Mr. Chair, if you don't mind, I, I would adamantly support that. If you go back and watch that meeting, many of those questions were asked when that change order came before us and this, the sitting board at the time was told in no uncertain terms that this was a very common occurrence that had gone on through many SOAR projects. So It may w very well be, Mrs. Winslow, but right now, as far as I, I know, the town has not been reimbursed. The, well, the sewer enterprise fund. So all the sewer users, including Onset, were on the hook for the $185,000. So my question is, where do we stand on that, and what's the next step? I think that if we uh, if we ask joint information between uh, Guy Campina, for John Foster, right. and Mike um, uh, from the Water District. I thought Mr. Foster had come in one night and explained this to us once. And if he has, tell him I apologize, but would like it re-explained in detail as to whether these reimbursements were made and where the money is coming from and where it's going to. And if we could try to get that by next week, Mr. Mm -hmm. Andrews. That's what, okay. Um, is that, is that 
Yeah, that, that's very so reasonable. Um, the other question that I have is, um, is it possible to, um, to put contract two um, or contract one? I mean, we're still paying bills for everybody. Um, just to keep that on the agenda on a weekly basis until this is resolved and that we can have a conversation about setting the betterment. Is that possible? Absolutely. Uh, but we should have someone to provide that information on a weekly basis rather than just have it in the agenda. Well, it would be nice to have Mr. Campina come in and say, or, or and he can certainly have a conversation with Mr. Judici and or Mr. Judici could um, email this board on a weekly basis as opposed to coming all the way here. Sure. But to let us know where they stand with um, warranties, where they stand with, you know, we heard fried circuit boards, we heard a whole lot of things going on. So if we could get a <coughs> weekly update, doesn't have to be um, Mr. Judici's presence, but I'd like to see Mr. Campina here um, to see where we are with counting properties um, and um, we need to know Instead of just getting, as Mrs. Winslow pointed out, getting bills that date back to last August, where do we stand today on all the projects? Mm -hmm. We'll make that happen. We'll start next week. Other sort of business. I don't have any other sort of business. Okay. So I just wanted to say that uh, on their sewer business, that I, th I thought that last week uh, was really pretty good. Mm -hmm. And um, until we have an elected board, I think at some point maybe we do uh, take one of our Tuesdays okay. and dedicate it uh, just to sewer business mm -hmm. for the evening and have a workshop. Mm -hmm. Now, there were a couple of things uh, out of that workshop, that not on the agenda. I'll make sure that they get on for next week. There was the presentation that we had to vote on. Remember, there were yes. a couple of, s of things, but they're not on the agenda, so we can't do it. So I'll make sure those things get on for next week. But I, I think if the board is, is uh, you know, agrees with that, I think that going forward, that we take one of our Tuesdays and just make it a sewer night. Mm -hmm. and, we can, and then we get better educated. The public gets better educated. I understand they wanted more in terms of the dollar bills. But when you look at the agenda, I think we got some great information. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if we could do that once a month, I think it would be great. Mr. Chair, I definitely think having a once a month um, SOAR meeting is a good idea or even starting our meeting out as the SOAR commissioners once a month so that that business comes first as opposed to uh, last. But um, one of the things that I think we really need to start tackling is these policies. You know, we got handed some policies last week. Uh, they're not on the agenda tonight, but you know, we can talk about one SOAR policy a week, and I think that's how we have to go through it. Uh, and if Mr. Campina is going to be here with the numbers, then he can certainly discuss some of these policies that, you know, they come up, we don't really get anywhere with them, then somebody has a problem and they come before us and we say it's a policy. We, we really should be policy review is an important part of what we do and I feel the same way by the way about some of the town's policies is that we've selectman policies that we've set we never really go back to see them and then before you know it somebody comes up and says well you have a policy yep. um, so thank you um, please on reports can I, I just go back to the sewer just for one quick second I would agree to once a month um, for dedicating it to sewer business uh, mr. Holmes if during that month we're meeting every week but I do, you know, there was several months um, in this past year that we met every other week. So I do not want there to be one meeting for all of the business of the town and one meeting dedicated oh, no, to no, sewer. No, we're required uh, to have two business meetings a month by charter. Right. And I'm talking about if we pick, like, uh, well, you can't pick the fifth week because it's not always the fifth week. But if we say, like, the fourth week of the month, right? Unless there's a holiday in there or something. We, we can be flexible with that workshop, but I'd like to see that done once a month. I understand, and, and we could also consider having that workshop on a Saturday so that more people could attend if they chose to do so. It depends on what the information right. is. I, I agree. Yeah. Ladies and folks, uh, uh, Mrs. Begley. Yeah, I'm looking at you, but I'm going the other way. <laughs> Are you always going first? Are you, are you a chance? Well, you already heard about uh, mine at Forest um, and the disease 
disease, these, peop these folks have worked tirelessly on this and I think when, they, when it was identified and they just didn't fully appreciate how slowly the wheels of bureaucracy turn. Um, Board of Health meeting is tomorrow at 4 p.m. Um, and I have a question. It's not my um, not my committee. It's yours, Mr. Holmes. Uh -oh. Did you happen to attend the CETA meeting yesterday? I did not. Uh, I was looking for some information um, regarding the meeting, so I guess I will c contact Mrs. Connaughton. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the Capital Planning Committee is meeting tomorrow, Mr. Slavin, at 1 o'clock. And this brings me to uh, a request that I'm going to have in a month. We'll have an election. There'll be a new board sitting. And again, the liaisons to the committees will be assigned. I would like to request that we get an updated list of the days and times that the committee meetings are held when we're all either picking or assigning to committees, we believe that they're meeting on, say, the third Wednesday of the month, the fourth Thursday of the month. However, all but one of my committees has changed their day or their time. And unfortunately, when they do that midstream, it's very difficult to accommodate them because we build our schedules around that. And I do feel very bad about the Capital Planning Committee. However, it's one o'clock, I can't do it. Um, and I've talked to Mr. Cruz about it, and I know that he's tried to attend on my behalf, and I certainly appreciate that. Uh, but it would be great if we could get an accurate listing. And the, my other two committees, the Recycling Committee has always been on the same, it's the uh, Thursday, but the Library Board of Trustees, it was either the Wednesday or it was the week before, and now they're on the same night, and they both have needs, and they both really need my presence, but unfortunately, I can only be in one place at a time. So it's going to be really important that we get this information from the chairs so that we're not doubled up on committee assignments and we can't meet the needs. I mean, the Library Board of Trustees was really upset that I couldn't be there for the spinny presentation, but the recycling committee had really needed me to come because they had some questions. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll, have, uh, we'll get an email out to the committee chairman in the morning uh, to make sure Excuse that... Excuse me, uh, can we? I mean, it's distracting when people are... <laughs> did I do some, did No. I talking? Yes. Oh. I can't hear you because there's distraction in the audience. Oh. I'm sorry. I'm deaf, so they get away with a lot. I am too. They get away with <laughs> a lot. Um, so we'll, we'll shoot out an email in the morning to all the committee chairmen just to make sure that we have the updated uh, times or if there were any changes. Right. Thank you. Um, just just to um, kind of piggyback onto that, so are you are you notified by email if the the meeting has changed or the location has changed, Mrs. Winslow? Well, we all get I get I just get the agenda that gets posted, uh, just like everybody else. And what's happened, and I understand it, is that as members have changed on the committees, they're the committees are trying to accommodate the schedules of the membership. No, I understand that, and I understand that I, for whatever reason, people are changing their meetings. I'm sure they're doing it with, with valid reasons. My question to you is, are you notified when that happens? Just by the reading the agenda that I get but you, copied So you're on. sent the agenda? Yes. So I would like that included into the, um, into the email as well, Mr. Holmes. If what is that? If, if, um, if at all possible, if the presence of a liaison is requested for something specific on the agenda, and or to um, if the the chairman or the clerks of the committees could could email the agendas to their their liaisons, that would be very helpful. So I get that. Like I get all my. CPC. Yeah, you don't I get, get them. I get those emails with uh, with the agendas. And no, what's going I don't. On, what's happening? What's the latest news? Oh. For the meetings, you know. I get. We'll I, I get we'll them. Ask them to do but that but Mrs. Really Begley's not getting hers, so maybe nope. we need to. Right. I'm not getting them address them with her committees. Okay. Anything else? Mr. Chairman, if I could just add one footnote to yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> um, it, would make a, it would make a lot of sense if the, if the email chains were uh, produced, and I've asked Matt to really stay on top of this, through the public email site so that people would have uh, the knowledge of that there is an open meeting law and we have to abide by it and that information sent along those lines are maintained. So just a footnote. 
Yeah, I don't think there's any. I don't think Mrs. Winslow or Mrs. Begley are suggesting any violations. No, no, no. I'm not. No, 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 I'm no, not saying that. Saying. I'm just saying let's use the public website. Right. Yeah. But I think that what they're asking is for the committees to send them an email. Yeah. Right. I missed yeah. it. I don't. I didn't understand. Went right okay, over my head. Else? Motion to adjourn. Aye. Three zero zero.